Okay, this image was provided by Sovrim Livocardia Pal. I hope I am pronouncing it right. If not, please forgive me. Um, all image rights reserved by Sovrim. Right, I was requested by Sovrim that if I can make a walkthrough video of uh, uh, this process I have done. So let's see. Um, um, uh, I, will, I, will, I will go through and I will explain what I did. To start with, this is the original image. When I saw this image, I really liked it, except uh, one or two things, which was uh, naturally the color wasn't right for me. It was a bit too saturated as well as um, I think it wasn't uh, the right color for the skin. So, so I carried on actually and, and did some adjustment. Anyway. I always leave one layer which is original untouched just in case if I need it. So that is this one, the first one. So we will disregard that for now and we will carry on with the rest. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> right. What I did to start with was I did some adjustment in this layer. Uh, sorry, I opened this um, image into Camera Raw, SCR, Adobe Camera Raw, and then I opened it without doing anything uh, as a smart object. To open image as a smart object, what you do, what you do is um, you hold Shift and open it so that it opens as a smart object, uh, and then I right click on it. And I made another copy, which is new smart object via copy. The reason I do that way is because by doing that, you can work on both layers individually. Whatever you do on top layer will not affect the bottom one. And whatever you do on bottom layer will not affect the top layer. But if it is not a smart object, then whatever you do on top layer will affect the bottom one and whatever you do on bottom layer will affect the top layer meaning you will not be able to work in a separately so that's the reason actually to do this way anyway let me double click this layer to show you what i did in camera row so here we are what i did was i reduced the clarity to minus 48 and vibrance to minus 35 because I wanted the skin tone um, more towards reality rather than uh, looking too saturated or wrong color so that's what I did and then I clicked OK of course I did that on bottom layer only meaning the top layer was uh, like original layer no adjustment were done on this particular layer okay which is this we will open that one so as soon as I did this adjustment here I then created a mask next to the top layer the reason I created mask is because the adjustment I did on the bottom layer I wanted on her only meaning I wanted on main subject of this image only, not on the background. So that's the reason I did that. And then if I click the mask, you will see the difference. I will hold shift and I will click the mask to switch it on and off. As you can see, the adjustments has applied on her only. On the main subject only it is not affected on background at all you see so that's the reason I did this and then I went further on which is cloning and spot removal now you can see as soon as I switch this on you can see the differences 
in eyes let me enlarge this image so that you will know exactly what I'm talking about okay now if I switch on and off just look at the eyes all the veins I have dimmed it out I haven't cleared them 100% because I wanted some natural look as well so I left I would say about 10% uh, 10, 10 to 15% and I removed the rest of the 80% I then what I did was I created another layer on top and that to give if you look carefully the pupil of the eye the dark area of the eye is brightened a bit and you can see the original color of the eye and that is the reason I did this layer there we are and then of course I changed the blending mode to lighten as we can see here at the top and then I applied hue saturation to, to make it a little more uh, saturated so that it, it the eyes pops out and then I applied the second layer because I wanted to reduce um, the adjustment I did I didn't want it hundred percent so I created another layer and uh, of course yes second sorry second the, the second hue, hue saturation was created just to remove the yellow tint from the eye because the eye was looking a little yellowish before so that's the reason I did that and then I removed if let me double click this one so that we will know what I did was actually I click this little icon here with two arrows on the sideways and then click on the eye ball and then I reduce the the tint was there Photoshop of course selects the the color automatically and then it reduces so that's what I did there then I made a composite snap I normally only write CS but because uh, I am commenting and doing this video for this group for the first time I have written composite snap usually I only do CS because I try to save my time uh, as well as that will make a video a little uh, less in timing wise because there's a limit on YouTube you can uh, use the uh, timing wise anyway after that I duplicated the layer because I wanted to work on the skin and I have used the portraiture plugin for that as we can see the difference as soon as I switch it on and off you can see the difference it actually gives the definition on the face um, the dimension 3, 3, 3D kind of um, look let me go back a bit and then we can see see this looks a little washed out kind of flat rather not washed out but flat flat you know so that, that's the reason I use this um, portraiture doesn't only do skin work it it only I mean it also sharpen uh, some of the area as well like for example hair eyebrows eyelashes and things like that so I prefer to use um, portraiture if you want to see let me click on this and then I will open it so you will be able to see here we are these are the settings actually I used uh, when I applied on 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 the um, on that particular layer okay I'll cancel it now because we have already applied it then I created new layer again which is here as we know next to the bin if you click that you will have new layer 
the reason I created new layer here is because this part of the neck was a bit too dark and if I brighten it up by any other way it will create a little bit of noise which I didn't really want it so what I did was I created it as you can see the difference now it's before this is after before after uh, I did cloning there actually um, and uh, and then I reduced the opacity only to 10% as you can see so that what happens is it will brighten up the area and the hair fringe will go a little faded rather than too prominent then I did some dodging and burning as you can see uh, without that there is there is no definition on, on the nose and the nose and lips and all this area but as soon as I switch it on you can see the definition is there this is on off on off so that's the reason I did dodging and burning to bring the definition back and finally, I then uh, did a composite snap again. Okay, you cannot see one process which I did after all this. And that was what I did was actually I flattened this image by clicking here on the right and then flattened the image. And then I went to the image adjustment and shadows and highlights i'm sure you have noticed noticed the the big difference straight away yes the reason i did was actually because i wanted the hair detail to be visible before it wasn't it was too dark mind you this one is actually a lot better than even the original so that's the reason actually i applied this which will cancel now because we have already applied this anyway uh, so that's the reason I did this um, finally um, oh yes one more thing I forgot to mention that this earring and this um, nose pierce I don't know what to call that actually but I sharpen it a little by selecting this sharpening tool and I went over it and then I reduced the opacity so that it doesn't look too bad. And that was it really. I hope this helps. Um, and thank you for watching. And bye for now.